Hello and welcome to Middlebury 5.0. I am your host, Officer Chris Mason. And with me in the studio today is Senator Patrick Leahy. Welcome to the show, Senator. Happy to be here, Chris. It's an, it's an honor to have you in the studio. Thank you. Great to meet you. <laughs> the, uh, having, having spent a few years uh, uh, wearing a law enforcement hat as mm -hmm. state's attorney before I was in the Senate, I'm always happy to be with officers. Right. Yeah. I, I heard from a from a close friend that, that you served as, as state attorney. Was it in Chittenden County? Is that Chittenden right? Chittenden County. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that was before you became a senator. Yeah, I was. And that a, was a while ago. It was. I was. Yeah. I was youngest uh, mm -hmm. state's attorney in the state. Right. I loved it. And enjoyed, mm -hmm. but that was back when the office was much smaller. I was on call, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. All the decisions were coming down, like Miranda and Map and others. Right. So that we're trying to get everybody up to date. I would go out with the police at 3 o'clock in the morning or at 3 o'clock in the afternoon if need be so I could be there to give them advice sure. on uh, what you could do and couldn't do because I want, if, if we arrested somebody and I convict, convicted them, I want to make sure the case up, was upheld on appeal right. and all, yeah. all of our cases were. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you trained as a lawyer. That's right. Yep. And and what what are some of your memories of, of being a prosecutor in, in Chittenden County? Well, what was it? You know, we're we talking I, about the in the early seventies. Yeah, yeah. I, I was born mm -hmm. in the uh, late sixties, early seventies. I, I was born in Vermont. Yep. In Montpelier, mm -hmm. and after law school, moved to Burlington to uh, practice law. Yep. And. On a Friday, it was announced that there was going to be a vacant, the office was going to be vacant. The mm -hmm. state attorney was leaving. There had been a number of problems. The governor asked me if I would take it, clean up the office, clean up the backlog. We had cases ranging from uh, felony robberies to murder. Mm -hmm. A lot of appeals pending if I would clean it up. Right. I stay a year and then come back and join the governor's law firm. I thought, sweet deal. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a cut and pay, but I was willing to do it. Yep. And I got in there and found it so intriguing, working with the law enforcement, watching, working to get their, their pay increased, but also get the standards of training increased. Mm -hmm. uh, tried a lot of cases, mm -hmm. argued a lot of appeals, and stayed eight years. Yeah. That, that's a while. It was. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I was 34 when I left that. Mm -hmm. was elected to the U.S. Senate. I, I must admit, though, my first couple of nights after I was sworn, I went straight for the state attorney's office in the U.S. Senate. Sure. First couple of nights, I, I was surprised I, there were no phone calls during the night. <laughs> I, I used to get, I mean, yep. the worst was one night about 30, but mm -hmm. I always get one or two phone calls between midnight and 5 a.m. from the police, <laughs> yep. double-checking something, could we get a warrant signed, we need a search warrant, whatever. And then I realized if you're in law enforcement, that's an important job. Mm -hmm. United States Senator, nobody cares. <laughs> especially, especially if I, I was the junior most member of the Senate. Sure, yep. And if you're the junior most, mm -hmm. you're a senator, but nobody gives you a lot of attention. Third, 34 is very young to get elected to the Senate. It, I, it was the youngest uh, Vermont ever had. In fact, we never liked it since the popular election of senators. Mm -hmm. We never liked anybody under 50. Right. And I, I, I mean, it was very well because... Uh, you must have been very charming. No, no. I just, uh, well, I, uh, when I was in law school, my wife and I were married. Yeah. Uh, she was born in what we call the Northeast Kingdom, right along the Canadian border. Her parents mm -hmm. from Canada. She um, speaks fluent French. And that time we had a heavy French-Canadian population. She had campaigned mm -hmm. French and... Yep. They could care less about me, but thought, she's pretty nice. <laughs> uh, a little, uh, uh -huh. the, the only hard part about it, after I got elected for the first dozen years or so, somebody mm -hmm. came up and said, do you remember me? And look at him kind of vaguely. <laughs> yep. I said, uh, when did we meet? He said, when you threw me in jail. <laughs> So that, uh, that happens to me at the grocery store. Uh, I'm yeah, sure it does. <laughs> yes. well, the, the, the worst was a few years ago, I was in uh, 
uh, St. Johnsbury. Right. And a man came up and said, hey, we met before with a very thick Vermont accent. And I said, uh, really, when? He said, 1974. <laughs> and I said, well, I was state's attorney in 74. I wasn't in the Senate. Yeah, yeah I knew. You threw my blank in jail. And I didn't mean to talk to you about it. <laughs> and I thought, my God, the guy's been waiting for 35 uh, years. That's a lot of time, I, yeah. <laughs> I said, send me a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was looking to thank you. Maybe you turned his life around. You set him on a, set him on a good path. You know, we actually had a couple that, that did tell me that. Yeah, yeah. We had a couple... I didn't get the impression he fell in that category. <laughs> <laughs> so that that first campaign back in the back in the mid seventies, you you served as a senator first of all seventy five. I, I understand. So, so that was in, sworn in seventy five. Yeah. So that would have been um, that would have been just after Nixon. That would have been during the Ford right. administration. And Nixon had um, been forced to resign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, President Ford came in, mm -hmm. so he had an unelected president. Right. And then he appointed Nelson Rockefeller as vice president. Mm -hmm. I think probably the only time we'd had both a president and a vice president who had never been elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, then, was, he, and then he pardoned Nixon. So. And he pardoned Nixon <laughs> no. just before the elections. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was also at the... The Vietnam War was going mm -hmm. on, which I had opposed. Uh, I think mm -hmm. the majority of Vermonters, it's hard to believe that today, but I think the majority were in favor. But those mm -hmm. opposed to it were very much opposed. Yeah. And in, I was born in January. In April, I was on the Armed Services Committee, mm -hmm. and we were going to have a critical vote whether to continue the war or not. And the no votes won by one vote, my vote. Wow. I got a layer from the chairman, and mm -hmm. they ch changed the amount a little bit, and they did the vote over five times. Mm -hmm. And I was getting lobbied by the president, the secretary of defense, secretary of state. Sure. And I said, no, that's what I believe it. And mm -hmm. we voted no. Uh, now, flash forward, um, I mean, the war ended. We went through some critical time. Mm-hmm. President George H.W. Bush, who had served in the military in World War II, mm -hmm. um, he came in, he was trying to find a way to start some opening up to Vietnam. Senator McCain, who had been held a prisoner of war for years, mm -hmm. Senator Kerry, John Kerry, who had fought there in the war uh, heroically, I had gone to Vietnam and were saying, no, we should try to open, open up. And uh, the president asked me, we had a thing called the Leahy War Victims Fund. This is to help people who have lost arms or legs, for, primarily from landmines, yep. most of them civilians. And could we use it in Vietnam? We got the Vietnam Veterans of America to say they would run it. Mm -hmm. And they were led at that time by a man who had been paralyzed from the waist down from uh, injuries he received in Vietnam as a young Marine. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we went over and started it. Uh, I'll never forget the day, several of us had a very, very hot day outside of Saigon, and several men who had basically been crawling or, or hopping on, on stools for years because they had no legs. Mm -hmm. And they were just staring at me as I was described as a person who the Leahy Fund and so on. Mm -hmm. And they were going to get wheelchairs. The first time they'd been mobile for years and years. And one man in particular just stared at me and I thought, <clears throat> he must hate me. You know, I was Probably, mm -hmm. probably three times his size, you know, six three over two hundred pounds, sure. and uh, they asked me to put, pick him up and put him in his wheelchair. And my wife, who's a registered nurse, would kind of whisper to me how to pick him up because she didn't want him to be injured. He probably mm -hmm. weighed sixty sixty five pounds with no legs, and right. so I picked him up all the time. He stared at me. I put him down in the wheelchair. I started getting up. He grabbed my shirt. 
he pulled me down and he kissed me. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> pretty emotional. Yeah. I've gone back there since to visit how we're doing it. We've done it eradicating um, Agent Orange. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, John Tracy who runs my Vermont office, a Vietnam mm -hmm. veteran. He was there in Da Nang. He came back with me and we saw what we are doing. But we went to a, a reception, a place where people were being helped uh, to get their lives back together, being helped for lost arms and legs. Mm -hmm. The first picture in the halls I came in was a picture of me years <laughs> before picking this man up. Wow. Yep. I thought, well, maybe once in a while we do something mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're participating in, in history, right? that, yeah. that process is just... Well, mm -hmm. But you know, we Vermonters do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, people talk about the uh, organic farm law, which is $35, $40 billion nationwide. The reason we have that is what I heard around the kitchen table from Vermont farmers saying, couldn't we have some standards Mm -hmm. We'll do all the work necessary to raise organic products, but we want there to be strict standards so somebody can, won't be able to just snap a uh, label on that actually have to do the work. And wrote the law mm -hmm. uh, and got it passed, and that's up a whole new industry. So there are Vermont thoughts. Mm -hmm. Vermonters have worked with me on, on banning landmines. Mm -hmm. We became the first country in the world to ban the export of landmines under the, under the so-called Leahy Law. Mm -hmm. And then started working with uh, Vermonters who really wanted to open up to Cuba mm -hmm. and break down the barriers with Cuba. And my wife and I went down, we met with Fidel Castro a long time with mm -hmm. him. But then after Raul Castro came in, uh, because of our relationship, he agreed to to see the two of us, the first American official mm -hmm. he had met with, mm -hmm. and we started the negotiation. We started bringing letters back and forth. I'd meet with him, then I'd go in and meet with President Obama, then I'd meet <laughs> with Castro, then I'd meet with his foreign minister, when he'd come up to the UN, and, and so on and so forth. Um, in fact, so much so that I'd walk into the Oval Office and Obama would say, don't start on Cuba. <laughs> but it worked. A lot of other people were doing the same thing, of course. Mm -hmm. Got the Pope to write a letter to the president, <laughs> which was uh -huh. kind of an interesting... So you, you persuaded the Pope to write a letter to Well, no. What happened, <laughs> Senator Durbin and I wrote to yep. the Pope. He was sure. going over to visit, mm -hmm. um, or President Obama was going to be meeting with him in mm -hmm. Rome. Yeah and urged us and got a, a cardinal who was a friend of his to do the same. Mm -hmm. The Pope then thought, well, okay. <laughs> he sent a letter to Obama, but he sends it to the cardinal mm -hmm. in Cuba. Okay. So we're trying to figure out how do we get the letter up there? Well, worked with Georgetown University to say, well, we'll have a study group mm -hmm. for just this week <laughs> on religion in Cuba. <laughs> so it gives a, under the old embargo gave mm -hmm. an excuse for the cardinal to come up. Right. So the cardinal comes up. Mm -hmm. The retired cardinal from D.C. is a friend, spoke Spanish fluently. So we're not going to lunch, we're going somewhere else. Do you have a letter? He said, yes. And it's great to watch this man tell us, probably 80 years old now. <laughs> he said, we go through the gates, this big white building, not sure where it was, police officers all around, they all mm -hmm. salute. I walk down this hall, man steps out and says, oh, good morning, Cardinal, I'm Barack Obama. He goes, I know who he was, I know who he was. <laughs> but it worked out. Mm -hmm. And we finally, after 53 years, mm -hmm. it's not all perfect yet, Sure, but yep. it's getting better. And I've had so many Vermonters tell me mm -hmm. they wanted to go there for uh, study purposes, academic purposes, cultural, mm -hmm. and now they can go. Mm -hmm. So we get some things done. <laughs> so you you get to meet these people. And I would imagine that the the list of people that you've met in your tenure as a senator is just it would be mind boggling. Like some of the people well, that you've encountered. Do you ever, you ever get starstruck by the by the people when you're 
talking to well, the president. Or you know, I, I say to myself, look, here I am. Mm -hmm. I was born in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. The Leahy's came here in the 1800s because uh, my grandfather died from my father's early teens. Mm -hmm. Father had to go to work. I became the first Leahy to get a college degree. Mm -hmm. I still remember my parents when I was a little boy saying, President Eisenhower is visiting uh, Vermont. Come with us because it would be the only time in your life you'll get to see a president. Mm -hmm. And I did. <laughs> well, I remember that. I was, mm -hmm. So, yeah, you, you, get, you get starstruck in a mm -hmm. way, but um, mm -hmm. a lot of these people are, many are concerned about the same thing you and I would be concerned about. Yeah. How do they make things better for their people? How do they? Um, uh, how do they face some of the problems of, in the world of the, of the environment and everything mm -hmm. else? Now, some are different. They are dictators who care just about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten into some very intense and very acrimonious discussions. <laughs> uh, do, do some places I haven't not, <laughs> have not been invited back. <laughs> Anything stand out? Any any really well, no, during some heated? Of the, uh, well, some of the war zones they've been right. they've been heated, but mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you have countries where they have uh, fought wars for decades, like Colombia, mm -hmm. and uh, they got to know President Santos quite well. Talked with him a lot about negotiating with the FARC, the rebels, mm -hmm. and talk to President Castro, who's helping with that. Now, earlier years, the United States went, well, we're not going to talk with Castro, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Cuba and Colombia talk to each other. I said, well, that's nonsense. They're mm -hmm. close by. They got some of the similar concerns. And they worked out uh, an agreement, which is still having some difficulty getting accepted by the Colombian people. Mm -hmm. But President Santos was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent a note to him earlier today. Yeah. He uh, is amazing because you realize watching that, it's not perfect. There is no perfect mm -hmm. way where thousands of people have died, where there's great animosity on both sides. But there is a way to probably stop the killing. Mm -hmm. and stop the fighting. And uh, he's found that. Mm -hmm. And so on these, I, I, I find it fortunate just to be an observer on the sideline. Mm -hmm. And I, I do a lot of photography. I bring my camera with me everywhere. Yep. People let me bring it in anywhere. So I've gotten mm -hmm. great shots. <laughs> and some are young children here in Vermont right. who are just learning to read. Mm -hmm. And you look at the looks on their face, and they're going, mm -hmm. the words are like, yeah. wow. Uh, others would be in a refugee camp, mm -hmm. and pictures that could bring tears to your eyes, mm -hmm. but remind you of what your moral responsibility is to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And then you get some interesting ones, like uh, then President Yeltsin, Boris Yeltsin of uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, at a funeral, and I'd gone there with pre then President Clinton. Well, President Yeltsin had flown all night long to get to the funeral, and if I'm an all night flight, I'll drink a lot of water. <laughs> he didn't drink water, <laughs> and, <laughs> and when he saw uh -huh. President Clinton, he goes Beep! and lunges, lands on him. <laughs> Clinton falls backward. I'm trying to hold the Two presidents, you know, 40 pounds of president, uh, one of whom's drunk, and, mm -hmm. and you know, Clinton say, thanks, Pat. I, I, wait, this is too good a picture. So I, I've, I've got the picture. Right, yeah. See, see, now it would be a video, and it would be up on Facebook. It? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and this was, this was film camera, though. So I didn't know what I had until I got home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But boy, I to tell you, it didn't take me long to get that film developed. I wanted to know what I had. <laughs> No, now, now it's a lot easier. It's digital, oh, and you right. can. Mm -hmm. But um, so you're a pretty avid photographer. 
I have, well, I've always had been. Yeah. I've had a lot of photo shows. I've had mm -hmm. a lot of photographs published, and mm -hmm. and actually, I enjoy it. If I if I have photographs published, a lot of times the publications will pay me for that, mm -hmm. and I give all that money to the Children's Library in Montpelier, Vermont. Oh, Cal wonderful! Harvard. I had my first library card there when I was four. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you take pictures, but I know you've been on the other side of the of the camera as well. You, you, yeah. You've been. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean my you real been, my real senatorial duty? <laughs> you, you have an impressive list of movie credits. <laughs> well, those, those, I was I actually I I rented um, Batman versus Superman only the other day. It was it was a few yeah, days I ago. I didn't do as well on that one. <laughs> uh, I think I, that. That's set it away. Well, you know, I've done I've done five of these. Right. They pay an awful lot of money. Yep. And I give all that to the children's library. Mm -hmm. They have a whole new wing there at the library. Mm -hmm. Children read books. I volunteered on on um, reading hour on a Saturday morning. In fact, sure. arranged a surprise visit. At one point, because I need some help, and the door opens in and walks Batman. <laughs> you got four and five year old kids, they got eyes like this. Uh, they help, uh, these kids of Montpelier help Batman mm -hmm. out with a problem. And mm -hmm. So as he's leaving, that deep voice goes, I want to thank you, children. <laughs> well, you're welcome, Mr. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> it was hard to keep a straight face. Yep. But you know, it's, um, I enjoy watching how they make, make the movies. Mm -hmm. But uh, neither my wife nor I are wealthy people, mm -hmm. and this is the one way we can give a lot of money to, to really the library that helped me when I was four years old. Yeah, it's got to be a lot of fun. Oh, as it well. is. <laughs> it is. Although uh -huh. sometimes when you shoot the same mm -hmm. scene twenty times, just get different yeah. angles. Yeah, you're like, okay, yeah. I don't know how the really. I mean, my my parts are very small. I use mm -hmm. just a few words or something. Mm -hmm. The people are the really good actors, how they do it, I mean, I'm in awe mm -hmm. of some of these uh, men and women, how sure. effortlessly, effortless they make it, although mm -hmm. when you're there with the shooting, you, you realize how much work goes into it. Mm -hmm. I had a very brief foray into the movie industry. It was, really? Yeah, it was when I was in Cairo, and they were shooting a soap opera uh, in, in Egypt, and they were going to the hostels to find extras to be decadent Westerners in the background. I think it was in a hotel, so they'd dress us up in these suits and... You weren't, you weren't being typecast as a decadent... I think I might have been, yeah, I think... <laughs> That's when you had the ponytail? <laughs> I think I did have longer hair back then, yeah. <laughs> so did you enjoy it? It was fun, yeah. They they paid us a little little amount of money and we got to, we got to stand around and I think they, they fed us a little bit as well and, and we, from that moment on, I've been able to say that I've, I've been in Egyptian television. <laughs> so That's good for you. Yeah. Well, I, I joke on this last one that has been out long enough, people don't have a plot where mm -hmm. apparently we all get blown up. And I said, no, no, no. My wife's a nurse. You got to be back together. I never even <laughs> missed a word. <laughs> so, so right now you, you're, you're facing an election. There's an election right. coming up, uh, running against Scott Milne. Mm -hmm. Um, what, are, what are the big issues of the, of the campaign? What, well, what do you see as the, he, the essence uh, of it? He's basically said he will come out with some issues. And okay. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the election's five weeks away. It's probably a good time. <laughs> it's coming uh, right up, yeah. But I think the issue is who, who can really help Vermont? Mm -hmm. Who can do the most for Vermont? I point to what I've always done for Vermont, from Vermont farmers to mm -hmm. students to the elderly, uh, everybody in between. Mm -hmm. uh, I asked you before I went on if you were wearing a, a bulletproof vest. And you sure. are. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, Senator Campbell, now retired from Colorado, mm -hmm. he'd been a uh, sheriff, I'd been prosecutor, and we found out that most smaller communities couldn't afford bulletproof vests. And as you know, they wear out after uh, They do, and they're, and they're extremely expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. We started a program and tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions by now, mm -hmm. been spent across the country buying or at least matching funds for uh, uh, bulletproof vests. Mm -hmm. 
in another state, a uh, police officer in full uniform came up to me and said, uh, are you Senator Lee? And I said, yes. He goes, thunk, 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 saluted, mm -hmm. said thank you, and walked off. Yeah. That's all the things I, I've ever wanted. Mm -hmm. But I remember the year that they, I'll tell you a short story, mm -hmm. uh, the year that some were refusing to allow the law to be reauthorized. I was furious at this. Mm -hmm. So I called a hearing, and I had a police officer from Pennsylvania. He was there in full uniform. He had his mother and father, his wife, and three kids mm -hmm. lined up behind him. He said, the two things I love the most in life, my family and being a police officer. He said, I stopped a car, uh, and the man got out, and I thought, I'll never see my family or be a police officer again. Mm -hmm. He shot me four times in the chest. I returned fire, and he was stopped a little bit further on. They caught him. Yeah. And he reached under the table, pulled up the vest. Mm -hmm. Here, four 40 caliber slugs stuck in that. He said, mm -hmm. my family came to visit me in the hospital that night. I had cracked ribs, but they brought me home the next day. So... My family, I love her here, and the uniform I love is here. Mm -hmm. And I thought, so I turned, <laughs> I turned to the committee and said, anybody want to vote no? <laughs> and we got it passed again. It's hard to argue with that. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh -huh. well, and in Vermont, um, in many places, officers' backup is 15, 20 minutes away, if yeah. there is backup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can be... Spread pretty thin. Yeah. Yep. And, and yet, if we have a problem in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. we think there's a burglar, we think there's emergency, we could pick up the phone, we expect you to respond and do everything right. Mm -hmm. So, work on that. And, um, you know, you, you get a chance as a senator to do, get involved in just about anything you want. It's like having a whole new education every day. Right. You read hundreds of pages of material. Uh, I constantly just walking down the street when we're home. Somebody come up and say, I want to thank you. You helped our family uh, on their Social Security problem. You helped mm -hmm. our family with their veterans benefits. You helped our neighbor with an immigration matter. For a kid from a long time ago, a kid... Mm -hmm. From Montpelier, Vermont, who became the first in his family to get a college degree. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I love the opportunity. Yes, yes. Well, it's a, it's a career of, of tremendous service and, and tremendous yeah. achievement. So is yours. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it is definitely yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's a privilege, like, like you say, it's a privilege yeah. to be able to, to be able to do that. Yeah, and yeah. it is, it's deeply satisfying, and it's wonderful when. You get that feedback from the community, and in, in my case, Middlebury, and in your case, the well, state you, of Vermont. Yeah, but you can walk down the street in Middlebury, you probably know half the people. Oh, I do. <laughs> and uh, uh, probably, probably some wish they hadn't met you. Uh, <laughs> that's a few, that's a few, yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. No, it is, mm -hmm. it is um, satisfying to think you're actually doing something for other people. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on the show and, and sharing yeah. Sharing your stories, some of your memories, and some of your insight with us, Thank Senator you. Leahy. It's I enjoyed it. It's been, been a deep pleasure. So until next time, drive safe, and may all your mischief be of the lawful persuasion. Oh, I like that.